are coming up on the fifth week of Easter. Can you even believe it? It is coming up on April 28th, 2024. Welcome to a cartoonist guide to the lectionaries. I'm Steve Thomason. I'm an artist, a seminary professor, and a pastor. And every week I look at the texts from both the revised common lectionary and the narrative lectionary. And then I look through all of the artwork that I have created and put on cartoonistbible.com. And I put it all together in one place just for you. So let's dive into this week's texts. All right. If this is your first time on cartoonistbible.com, welcome. I just want to remind you of how you can find these weekly resources. Go to cartoonistbible.com slash lectionary, or when you're on the site, you can always hover over the resources tab and click on lectionary guides, and it'll bring you right here to the main page of Cartoonist Guide to the Lectionaries. Then scroll down and just find the week that you're looking for. Now, each week, I put the links to the text themselves from both the Revised Common Lectionary and the Narrative Lectionary, and then I have a link to the resource page. So let's click on the page for April 28th. Every week at 4 p.m. on Monday afternoon, we get together on Cartoonist Bible Network on a Zoom call, and we get to talk about these texts. So I'd love to have you join me, and you can check that out for free, a seven-day free trial. The first reading for the Revised Common Lectionary is Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. This is the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Here's the page where we have Philip. He encounters the eunuch on in his chariot who's heading back to Ethiopia, and the, the eunuch is baptized. I have a PowerPoint for you. This is found on page one, uh, slide 144 of a cartoonist guy. Look at that. Oh, found it right away. And so inside of the whole mega pack, you just download the mega pack once, and then you can find all the slides in there. However, a few years ago, before I drew a cartoonist guide to Axe, I illustrated this particular story when I was preaching on it. And I made this YouTube video where I just do a straight reading of it. So if you would like to use this video, you can definitely use it. It's on YouTube. It's free. You can just show it. And it's just a, a reading of the text with the slides. And this, this is the slideshow that I use as a, as a voice. I do a voiceover of it. So you can just read through the text. And of course, you can just use these slides and you could read the text yourself, use them as a supplement to your preaching, teaching. So this is uh, one of the most illustrated stories I've done. Of course, just click here and you can get the button to download it. And then also, if you read, click on read commentary, um, I, I did a walkthrough of this text uh, as I was preparing for that sermon. So I invite you to, to look through that. This is just a, a powerful story as this, this eunuch um, who is an Ethiopian, which means he's a foreigner from the people of Israel. He's African. He is also a eunuch, which means that he, his gender has been altered and which according to Mosaic law, may actually disqualifies him from entering the temple. And so you can do a lot of things around gender identity with this text and inclusion. And then uh, talking about how this, this eunuch is reading scripture uh, and is seeking God and how God find, God reveals God's self to this seeker, right? So it's just so many stories and how Isaiah connects to the story of Jesus and how Philip, uh, once again, the story of, of Acts is how the Spirit is leading these Jewish disciples of Jesus across these cultural boundaries to reach out and interact. Like according to the Mosaic Law, Philip was not supposed to be interacting with this uh, Ethiopian eunuch. And yet in the water of baptism, they find equality and it's just a, and unity. And it's just such a beautiful story. So those are resources that I've got for you for the uh, first reading of the Revised Common Lectionary. The second reading is uh, the Psalm is Psalm 22. Again, I don't have images for that. 
And then the, the second reading is from 1 John. And unfortunately, I don't have images for 1 John, maybe someday. The gospel reading for this week is John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. And what you will notice if you look ahead in the RCL is that the RCL is starting a little mini series on the upper room discourse. And so here is page 16 of a cartoonist guide to John. And these four chapters, uh, chapter 14, 15, 16, and 17, form what many scholars call the upper room discourse. And this is where Jesus is with his disciples in the upper room uh, around the Last Supper. And in chapter 13, he's washed the disciples' feet. So he embodies and enacts what the love of God looks like. And then in John fashion, Jesus speaks in huge metaphors. And so this was a really fun text for me to illustrate because we've got, it starts off with the Father's house. There are many dwelling places. And then Jesus talks about uh, the role of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and how the disciples will do greater works than he, than he does. And then how um, the Father's love is revealed in Jesus and the Holy Spirit giving peace to them. And then the, the main text is here in John chapter 15. And this is really where the next couple of weeks we'll spend time is this is my favorite metaphor that Jesus uses for who God is, who Jesus is, and who we are as Jesus' disciples. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Remain in me and I will remain in you and you will bear much fruit. And then it leads to the commandment to love one another. And so I've got this PowerPoint for you so that you can walk through all of these. If you want to give bigger context or if you want to just dive into the uh, the vine and the branches, just two slides for that, you can download that here. But I do want to tell you, I have been working with this text since I was a little boy. John 15 really is the central text for me and my theological imagination. And so I made this video many years ago. This is a YouTube video. And this is my number one viewed video on YouTube. I think it's been viewed like 370,000 times at the making of this video. So that's pretty wild. And so I invite you to uh, enjoy this video. You can use this video if you want to share it with uh, your people. And then this is a, a one of many illustrations I've done uh, to, the, to, to talk about uh, the, the metaphor of Jesus, uh, the vine and the branches. And the reason, the, the idea behind this image is I was trying to imagine how Jesus might uh, frame this metaphor if he lived in, in our time in this modern technological age. And so I thought maybe Jesus might say, um, I am the power grid <laughs> and you are the extension boxes plug into me and I will be plugged into you and through me, the energy will go out. You know, I, I don't know if it works, but, um, I added this uh, source of renewable energy. So it's kind of like the Father is the source of energy and the Spirit is the energy itself. And we are plugged in to the power grid. So that's kind of fun. And then if you click here, I've got a, a post on my site where I talk more deeply about the images of the vine and the branches because it really goes back to the Garden of Eden and the, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and ev evil and all of these gardening metaphors. Uh, Psalm 1 talks about blessed is the, the one who, who uh, delights in the Torah. They're like a tree planted by streams of living water. Um, Isaiah talks about how Israel is the vine and the people are the branches and the fruit of Israel is supposed to be love and peace in the world. And, but they, but that vine has to get cut down. And of course, Jesus is fulfilling the prophecy of the, the shoot of Jesse. And so Jesus isn't just making this up out of thin air in John 15. He's really tying into a running theme throughout all of Hebrew scripture. And he's tying himself into that as claiming himself as the, the vine and his disciples as the branches. And so a lot of imagery here for you that I've done over the years. So enjoy that. Use that if you find it helpful. Okay, so that's the Revised Common Lectionary. Now let's come down here to the Narrative Lectionary. So the text for the Narrative Lectionary this week is Acts chapter 18, 
verses one through four. And that is really just a segue because um, the, the main text comes down here is a beginning, a little mini series in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. And the text is chapters 1, 10 through 18. So what you can do is use these images from a cartoonist guide to Acts to pr place context. And so the story of Paul is after he spends time in Athens speaking to the Greek philosophers, he goes to Corinth and he actually spends a year and a half in Corinth and he makes friends with Aquila and Priscilla who are from Rome and that begins his connection to the church in Rome. And then of course he preaches in the synagogue and the synagogue eventually rejects him. And so he goes across the street to Titius uh, Justice's house, Titius Justice's house, where there are Jews and Gentiles in fellowship together. And it's just this beautiful experience that Paul has in Corinth, 18 months of peace until eventually he's, he's run out like he is out of every town. Um, and then Paul leaves Corinth and goes and, and when he comes back on his third missionary journey, he ends up in Ephesus. And while he's in Ephesus, he receives word from his friends in Corinth that there's a lot of things going on that are troubling to Paul. And so Paul writes this letter and I created this image uh, a long time ago that tries to just map out the entire letter to Corinth, the first letter to Corinth. And so what it does is it um, walks through the different issues. So a lot of scholars think that you can read 1 Corinthians as like a, a list of items that Paul is addressing. So first he talks about there's factions in the church, and then he talks about sexual immorality in the church, and then he talks about um, law, and whether you should take uh, your sibling in Christ to a Roman court or not. Then he talks about marriage and sexuality and gender equality. Then he talks about uh, meat sacrifice to idol, which was a huge issue in that culture. Then he talks about spiritual gifts and what they are and how not to use them. And then he talks about the theological con conflict over resurrection. And then he, then he tells them that he's coming to collect uh, for, from them for Jerusalem and the famine in Jerusalem. So that, those are my images just to walk through um, 1 Corinthians as a whole. Now here's an image for the text for this week where Paul talks about how the cross of Christ is foolishness. And I did a pretty deep dive, if you want to go into this commentary, where I walk through this passage and I've got a lot of Im images here about how, you know, the fact that Jesus died on the cross is for 2000 years, we've been trying to theologically understand what does that actually mean? And so Paul talks about how the, the cross shows that, that God emptied God's self and died a, a foolish death. Like it, for, for the Greeks, it doesn't make sense. And for the Jews, it doesn't match up with their expectation for a king that come and deliver them. And so um, Paul is trying to tear down uh, religious power structures and um, wisdom of, of science and philosophy. This kind of ties it into our, our day today. And so there you go. There's a lot of a lot of images that you might be able to use. And my final conclusion here is that God shows up in brokenness because God is mystery that cannot be explained or controlled. Um, here's some notes that I took from uh, Leslie Newbegin's book, Foolishness to the Greeks. If you want to do a deep dive, I've got a review of that book there. So just a lot of images around this really, really important text in the beginning of uh, 1 Corinthians. And then finally... The gospel reading for the narrative lectionary is Mark 9, 34 to 35. And here, um, the narrative lectionary authors, they tie into Jesus' story about who is the greatest. And again, uh, I think they chose this gospel because it really emphasizes the foolishness of Jesus' claim to be a uh, the son of God and the king of this new kingdom, because the, the true kingdom of God 
is completely upside down from the kind of kingdoms and power structures that humans want to build. It's not about power and control. It's about uh, selfless, other-oriented love. And quite honestly, in the human economy, that's foolishness. So that's, I think, what's going on here. Again, you can download that PowerPoint. Um, so those are the texts for this week. Again, my little announcement and invitation is um, if you want to do a deeper dive in the book of Acts, uh, there's three ways you can do it. You can uh, read the graphic novel. You can look at my Heart House study from 20 years ago or the brand new Hot Off the Presses uh, course on Acts at faithlead.org at Faith Lead Academy. Hey, thanks for joining me this week. I hope that uh, these visual resources are helpful for you uh, to, if nothing else, to just ignite your imagination in a different way to read the text and maybe a different way to communicate the text to your people. I do this because I'm passionate about the good news of Jesus. My goal for you and for me is to grow deeper in the love of God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of the world. So thanks for being with me. We'll see you next time. Thank you.